Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here for the second time today and this time I'm actually making my Alice in Wonderland junk journal cover. It's going to be a hard cover journal so I do like to make the covers first. Then I can use it as reference while I'm making my signatures just to check everything is going to fit okay in my cover. I don't like doing the signatures and then doing the cover after. I just don't. We all have us preferences. You can do it either way. It don't make a difference. This is just my way. Right. I've decided how big my signatures are going to be. Each one is going to measure 8 inches high and 5 and 3 quarter inches wide. I've just trimmed a little bit off an A4 to get those dimensions. The 8 is because it then makes it the same height as my 8x8 papers. It'll be easier when I use those then. And I've just trimmed the edge to get a five and three quarters, an equal measurement, an easier number to work with. So my actual cover, I'm going to make it half a hin half a inch. I'm doing it again, putting them H's in where they don't belong. Half an inch higher than my signature height, so that's eight and a half. And I'm going to make it half an inch wider. Thank you. Tea delivery. It is Mother's Day after all. Half an inch wider. I know we don't need any room here, but I want to put tabs on so it gives me an extra bit of room there. Right, I've gone ahead and cut my chipboard to eight and a half high and six and a quarter wide. I did go ahead and cut my spine, which is going to be two and a quarter inches. But I have used a bit of chipboard, yeah, that weren't tall enough. So you're going to see me cut that now. I use my rotary trimmer, which is this. And what's this? Is that one the right height? Yes. That one is the right height. I did start cutting and I went a bit wonky, so I had to grab another bit of chipboard. So, oh yeah, see, it just all went pear-shaped on that side. So, I want it two and a quarter inches wide. When I'm cutting smaller amounts, even on a rotary trimmer, I like to put pencil marks just so it can, I can line it up a little better with where I want to cut. If I can see my pencil marks on my cut edge, I'm a happy bunny. Cutting edge, should I say. Especially with this, because we don't, I don't have marks. They're just on the inch mark. So cutting halves and quarters is a bit dodgy. Dodgy, she says. But I can see my marks. You won't be able to. So I'll just line it up. That's looking good to me. And cut. But you're thrilled now you've got to see me use that. <laughs> I'll put that out of the way. So it's, it's an old one this. This is a good 25 year old. Maybe more. An oldie but a goodie. Right, so I've now got my... We'll get rid of that one that were too small. I've got my spine piece, which is eight inches. No, it's not. Eight and a half inches high and two and a quarter inches wide. Right, if you're making a journal, and this is what I do to help me decide. It might be a silly way, but it works for me. This is how I decide how wide to make my spine. I decide what space I want between my signatures. Yeah, and I get a ruler and I start off. And I put what would be my setting when doing it sent actually this works out perfectly it's centimeters nearly not three bad so I put my ruler here and I think right let's do this one I think right how much space do I want between my signatures I'm having five signatures I don't want to go a full half an inch I think that's a bit much quarter of an inch a bit too close I'm putting some chunky embellishments in. So each signature is going to be three eighths of an inch apart. So I make this series of little marks and then I want another three eighths of an inch on either side of my signatures. That will be one, two, that will be my spine. I do the same on this side. One, two, three. That will be my spine. And then I just measure that gap. So what does that come to? That comes to two and a quarter inches. So that tells me my spine's going to be two and one quarter. 
yeah I, I could add it up in my head but sometimes I find it better to visualize these things I don't know if that's helped I might have confused you more but that's how I do it yeah well, you could just write in what it's going to be we are physically measuring it with a ruler but I like to see it I like to think yeah that's how wide it's going to be so that is my spine and that's going to make a nice chunky little monkey but not too chunky right a lot of waffle there wasn't there this is how I got this out because I totally and utterly forgot I had this I bought this to make a Halloween mini album a good few years ago. It's black chipboard. If you've got this, use this. You don't have to cover it with anything. It's fabulous. You might you just have to cover where you've put some Yeah, on the spine, but we're gonna put some fabric on the spine anyway. I love fabric on the spine, it just makes it more durable. So I'm gonna be covering grey board in black paper, but if you've got that, go ahead and use it. I know not everyone will have, so I'm going to show you how to cover it in paper as well. But that would be an absolute time saver. But I recall this not being too cheap, so I'm going to put it away and look after it. <laughs> or I might make another one with it today. So, put the Alice papers out of the way. I'm going to use this. And this is what I used to use before I obviously discovered black chipboard. I could be telling fibs because I can't remember. I didn't even know I had that. <clears throat> but I'm guessing it was for a Halloween mini album because I did make one with the graphic 45 rare oddities one year. Right. This is... It's cardstock. It's... Is it... They call it cardstock. It's colour core cardstock. And it's got a lovely... I don't know if you'll even be able to see it. It's like a hessian type texture linen. Yeah, but it's not too distinctive. And it's Coordination's Black Cat Premium Canvas Texture Cardstock. I did used to use this a lot. This is where I don't understand the grammage of things. It says it's 250 GSM, but it's quite thin. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It, the, thin, the thickness of it seems to be more like a... 160 180 to me but it's really good for covering mini albums and junk journals because this junk journal cover is going to be a little bit akin to a mini album so i'm going to show you what i do now i'm not going to join these together before i cover them in cardstock the reason being sometimes when you lay them all down and then cover it all at once in cardstock it makes it they're not very flexible sometimes your joints particularly as I'm then going to put some fabric on outside yeah so I'm going to cover each one of these individually and I'm only going to cover this so that I then don't have to paint it black do you know what I mean well you perhaps don't know what I mean so I'm just going to wrap these in cardstock so Let's put them all out of the way apart from one sheet. Somehow I've got that top sheet scratched. I don't know how that occurred. All of it's bent at corner. That happened in delivery. Thank you, Amazon. So, I'm going to put this face down on the table. And I'm going to pop this here. Yeah. And round the edge for wrapping over. I normally go anywhere from half an inch to three quarters of an inch so i do have a ruler here it is here's my fabulous ruler can you see it's exactly one inches wide yeah so if you have a one inch ruler get measuring i'm going to put that line at the edge of my cardstock i'm going to butt that there and then i'm going to measure one inches over yeah get a pencil woman get a pencil and I'm gonna mark it yeah and I'm gonna get brave and I'm gonna use my craft knife and ruler for this <laughs> rather than get my chopper out because it's not necessary is it to be chopping all this stuff <laughs> she says so watch this watch this if it gets if it's a bit wonky it don't matter that's why I'm 
quite brave and I'm going to use my craft knife and ruler. Do, do, do. Don't know why it deserved a fanfare, really don't. So, let's go. I've still got my safety ruler, you will notice. Let's put my fingers out of the way. So that's that, about an inch on either side. I'm going to measure an inch up that way. If I had two of these rulers, I'd just put the other one there and then measure around that, but I don't have two of them, do I? I'll just have the one. Oh, do you know what would be even better? If I got myself a big green mat in inches, because I tend to work in inches far more than I work in centimetres, and it would just make so much more sense. Da -da -da. I'm just, I'm just messing on using three rulers. Could I be any faffier? I just don't want to get my big trimmer out. It's, that's bone lazy, isn't it, really? Is it bone idle? Yeah. I'm bone idle. But it's Mother's Day, I can do what I want. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. On Mother's Day, I make rules. Oh, see? That's how... Rubbish I am sometimes with these. That just totally ran off. I brought it back. So, that's that. Doesn't that look far bigger than you think it would? An inch round either side. So, what am I going to glue it with? Now, I've seen other people use wet glues, but I always find when I use this grey board, it warps. If I use a wet glue like PVA, I'm not going to use Fabri-Tax, it's far too expensive. So I'm going to resort to my Kalal and a bit of double sided tape. Oh, I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. It's Mother's Day, I can do what I want. Ah, that's lovely. They're well trained now in tea making of my kids, they can make a really good cuppa. Right, grab some of my double-sided tape. I'm also going to grab this Tyvek tape because we'll need that in a minute. It's my preferred tape. Right, double-sided. I'm going to use... I like this. Yeah, we don't seem to get tape as strong in the UK as you get over in the US. You have that score tape and it seems much better. I don't know what happened to the end of that. It's all battered. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut it off and waste some. Oh. I'm wasting. Now you perhaps don't even need tape this strong. You could perhaps use ordinary score tape, but I don't want mine falling apart. <laughs> I've got visions of children fighting over this book and ragging it <laughs> and trying to destroy it. So I'm just putting this red line tape all the way around the edge. Da -da -da. I've not cut that straight enough for my liking. Then when I put it on, I'm going to burnish it with my bone folder. Tape always sticks better if you give it a burnish. I don't know why, it just does. When you buy this stuff, it even says it's pressure sensitive. Pressure. Yeah, there's some technical thing about it. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Sometimes I'd be really good if I could remember what I want about. Yeah, I could. So I'm just going all the way around edge. I'll be doing exactly the same with other R. Before I stick this down, I'll measure my next piece of paper with the one I've already cut. I think that's just a method I come up with because I'm really bad at measuring i mean look at that first spine i did i made it wrong size didn't i i made first spine too short right if i'd have just been doing it like this i wouldn't have got it wrong would i i don't know what i'm on about again now so i'm just burnishing this tape right down and i'm going to fill the middle in with kalal this way when you use a dry adhesive and the silicon based adhesive you don't get the paper wet, the card and paper wet, so they don't tend to warp. 
it's the, it's the water that warps things isn't it well it is yeah i'm not asking you i'm telling you <laughs> right so that's that i'm gonna come in and do other piece and all while we're at it i always tell i don't know why there's a i see this as having a right and a wrong side sometimes and i don't know whether it even has I just like to have them both the same way around. Sometimes they'll have a slightly different colour, won't they? I'm just, I am talking rubbish now. I think this has turned into craft with me rather than learning you out. Well, yeah. Get your feet up, get your new slippers on, get your new mug out, grab your box of chocolates, and you can spend Mother's Day watching YouTube. I didn't have a box of chocolates. I had a list of Wonderland paper. I did have a bar of chocolate last night though while we were vegging. I just had a, I decided I needed a day off really yesterday. I did. So I didn't do much. I did. I, did, I can't even remember what I did do. Oh, I finished off some little booklets that I've been wanting to list on Etsy. And yeah, that were it. Oh yeah, I made up some of the eyelash trims, made some of the bobbins up and got some of the most popular colours all wound up ready. So I just need to pick and pack my orders as they come in this week and the ones I've already got. Your order will be going out, Hilda. Yeah, we're due to send quite a large order out to the Hilda on Friday. And I just message to her I'm like I'm just too tired Hilda I'm too tired to work but I've had to do that a couple of times this week I've, I've had some really lovely customers who have like no problem not in a rush you crack on I just basically messaged life's got in the way because it has I weren't expecting to be tired my day is usually I work I'm burnishing the wrong one I work from when kids go to school and they usually set off for school anywhere between 8 and 8 30. Well, I always try and make sure I have a lunch break just to refresh the batteries and then I'll work till they get home which is usually about 3 30 3 45. That's when I do my post office run once I know the home. It's obviously changed during the lockdown and last week I did not have the energy to do it and usually then after tea I'll work again for two or three hours on a night I've not got that done at all this week so I've got behind on everything right I'm just taking another piece of this cardstock and this time I know this is exactly the right size so I'm not going to faff about measuring with 3,000 different rulers I'm just going to mark it and then I can cut it. Right, move that Tyvek tape out of the way, it doesn't need to be there yet. Are we okay for light? Yeah. Quite shiny this side of this card stuck isn't it? So I'll grab my safety ruler, ensure I don't cut my fingers off. I've got pencils rolling in and I've just got marks to line up now. That's why didn't I do that last time with the ruler? It's because I haven't done this for ages with a ruler. I've been doing a lot of soft cover journals. You do get rusty. What's that saying? Use it or lose it. Yeah, that does apply to knowledge. I think as you get older as well, you forget things more quickly if you're not. It's not going all the way through. So if you're not practicing those skills, you forget them. So one of these scraps will do my spine piece. So I've now got my two pieces of paper, my two what sets. I'm now going to, this is where this lovely ruler comes in handy. I'm going to mark around this, down this side, just two sides, just to know where I want to line my paper up. I'm going to mark this left hand side and the bottom 
it just makes it all look a bit neater on inside I know it might be more measuring than you want to do making a junk journal but yeah, can you see then when I stick that on I can see those pencil lines and know I'm where I want to be right I'm now going to come in and before I put the other glue on I'm going to take these tapes off I'm now going to swap to a blunt craft knife because I'm just not safe doing this with a sharp one this one's that same blading for about as long as my kids have been alive it would struggle to cut paper mind your skin so I'm going to take these backing strips off There we go, and because they're, they're all staticky and they get stuck to you and they're really annoying me, I'm putting them straight in my bin. Right, I've now got my Kalal, it's got plenty in, and I'm going to fill in the centre with Kalal. I'm not too bothered if there's any gaps and it doesn't look perfect on the front of the book, because with we're going to have another piece of card on top of this one when we decorate. I don't. It, in other words, I don't need every smidgen of an inch covered. Right, but I like it. I don't worry that if it goes on to tape, because that's not a bother either. Right, that's covered. Can you see? And I'm just going to turn it over now and put it onto the cardstock. I am using the back of the cardstock, I'll just remind you of that. And I just thought to myself, ooh, just check you're using the right side. And I'm going to come in and press this down. I love it. Oh, it just pleases me to see that all nice and lined up. Then I'm going to turn it over. Now, yeah, I've seen people using brayers for this. I don't have a black brayer clean enough to do this so I'm going to carry on doing it with my fingers brayer fabulous idea though I'm not even going to use my bone folder on this because I don't want to put marks on this cardstock or dents I'm just going to keep doing it with my fingers well it's not my fingers I'm like using on the back of my hand now that I'm quite happy with. I'm not going to come in and do anything else with that until that Kalal has had time to grab. It takes a few seconds to set up. Right, I'm going to come in with this one and do exactly the same thing on the other piece of cardstock. Now technically you don't technically you don't need to wrap all four sides. You could get away with doing three. You're not even going to see one of them. But again, it just keeps it all nice and smooth and even. It makes the decorating of the front cover easier. If this was a mini album, we wouldn't be putting off and putting fabric on front cover. But it's not, it's a junk journal. I always used to have reservations when I made mini albums that they were not going to last as long as I would like them to and even on my mini albums I started covering spines with fabric and using things like craft text so I like to think that things I've made are going to last and I don't expect to see me at British Museum in 500 times in 500 years time it's like oh this is a this is a Julie Walker <laughs> it's probably going to have disintegrated by then isn't it but you know what I mean. I don't want it to last two years and fall apart. Whee. So that's well covered. Oh, I forgot to do me. Uh, well, the Kalal, I'll have two seconds to start getting tacky. Do you know what? Actually, I think I've got my fingers stuck on double sided tape. Stop it. It's attacking me. I think it tells you on bottle you know to wait a few seconds before you attach your pieces of paper together. You know, like it does on super glue and things like that. But do we ever, do we ever follow them kind of instructions? We don't often do it. 
Right, have I got... No, I've not got glue on my finger. It was just tackiness. Right, so I'm going to measure going to measure it. No, I'm not. I'm going to line it up again with my pencil marks. And I know it's... I've got a nice even amount all the way around. That's... You don't need to do that. I can't imagine Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodle faffing about like this. And to be quite honest, she'll get just as good a result as me. <laughs> this satisfies my inner perfectionist, I think. Looks like this said there's yeah. more than one way to do something. As long as it'll be right in end, at end of day, if it looks right, it's right. So, but yeah, I, I'm guessing some of you US ladies are more familiar with doing this kind of thing for mini albums. You, tell, you talk about mini albums in this country and they just... What, huh? Huh? What, what? Is it like you're tiny? No. It just means it's bigger than one of them great big chunky 12 by 12 things, doesn't it? A 12 by 12 scrapbook, I'm assuming. Tell me different if you know different, because I'm wondering if I even know now. Right, I think that's enough smoothing. <laughs> I reckon my glue should be well stuck. I'm just going to swap these over now. I'm going to bring this one back. And I'm going to wrap my corners. I will be putting book corners on the finished album. I'm going to go for some silver ones. I've decided silver charms, silver book corners, and I might even put a silver lock on the front. We shall see. So I'm going to come in now and cut my corners. Right, you're going to want to leave an eighth of a, pardon me, an eighth of an inch so that when you wrap your paper over your book it's going to be nice and neat now I'm going to do it by eye because I'm silly like that <laughs> it doesn't matter if you cut straight across again just by doing it like this it, it just looks that bit neater inside but again it's something that's then going to get covered so I think we're a bit mad doing it really Oh, mine's gone a bit near with that one. If you do, just make sure that's going to be the one that then goes next to your spine and gets covered with fabric. If you're worried about doing this, I'll show you another little thing you can do. Just get a ruler. Yeah, cross the corner and mark it. Can you see? If you want to angle it, you can go just in from there up to your line and then just out. You won't see that. We're going to put book corners on anyway, so if you fluff this bit up again, it still doesn't matter. I just like the book corners to. Yeah, it'll give your book that bit of longevity. They don't always look good, in which case you're just going to have to be careful with your corners, aren't you? Right, I'm now going to come in. I'm going to use my posh Teflon bone folder. I'd forgot what this was made out of until Fiona mentioned it on a video yesterday, Miss Paint a lot. And I'm going to. Can you see? I'm just. There you are. Do you know this doesn't do so good on grey board as it does on chipboard? I'm just folding that over. I'm manipulating it with bone folder and it's less likely to crack this card is fabulous for not cracking i think that's why a lot of mini album makers use it it's really good and it's got a black core so when it's black all the way through you don't get no funny funky lighter colors when you cut it i'm just going to do this to all it's rounded end it seems easier here. <clears throat> My other bone folder, which is just plastic, it's got that many chunks missing out of it now and that many bits of glue stuck to it. It was starting to mark my paper. So I thought, use your Teflon one that you've had squirreled away. Too nice to use. It's a tool woman. Use it. So I just it just makes it fold over that bit nicer when you do that. Right, I've not gone all the way over. Because before we go all the way over, I want to put some glue on. I'm not going to go for tape. I just can't be bothered. 
I'm going to go for glue and I'm going to do them one at a time right I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here not the right the way up to the edge because this is going to squidge sideways a little bit and I'm just going to put some over here yeah and then to fold that in I'm going to do that that's my preferred way to do it and I'm going to give it a good press before I turn it the other way make sure I've got none on my table and then I'm going to come in and do that with my bone folder it is the kalal again it might take a couple of seconds to stick so while I'm holding that I'm also going to just go across the edge just to make that nice and flat see I've marked the card a little bit there but we won't see it I'm hoping this kalal is going to be sticky enough for this it seems to be it seems to be right now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to bend that corner in so that when I fold it can you see it'll be nice and neat sometimes it's easier if you lift it off your table for this yeah. then I'm going to come in and put glue down there just a smidgen I like to have my edges nice and stuck and then along here and then eat a good press before I turn it over check I've not got any here it does rub off really easy this kalal if you do get glue where you don't want it like there you see even on black cardstock you can rub it off and it won't leave any marks whatsoever so get your bone folder in a moment press that down I'm just going to go along the edge that first one's pretty well stuck now I'm going to lift that up and see on the edge I'm just going along with the edge of my bone folder it just makes that so much neater like a real book because <laughs> this is a fake book isn't it of course I'll come in and give that another press that seems fine then I'm going to tuck this little corner in again so you're just bending over that little bit that overhangs And I'm going to come in again and put glue in the crease just a little bit and cover these flaps I seem to be using a little bit more each time that's why I've got a bit of squidge squeaks I can't say it squidgeage <laughs> Squ squidging squidgeage is squidgeage a word because it's very difficult to say because I thought I'd put too much glue on there I didn't turn it over and use my desk because I, I, were, I were expecting an awful lot of squidgeage right let's there's a bit so I'm just going to make sure I move that away I don't want to have to clean more glue off than necessary and I'm just coming in I just want this down really stuck you might think this is a bit of a long drawn out way of doing this but Hey ho, I like it done. I like this bit done really spot on, especially when I'm using kit pages, not kit pages, design papers. They're lovely and square when you get them. So I want a nice, perfect square base for my cover. Yeah, I'm just rubbing off my squidgeage. I did I, I knew I'd gone really mad putting glue on that piece and I knew I was going to have trouble but there you go trouble averted and let's come back in with the bone folder yeah can you see I'm squidging glue out left right and center 
because I've put too much on. I'll, I'll have to be a bit more careful with my last one. Right. Yeah, back to being light-handed. There we go. <laughs> I totally missed it then, didn't I? So, go back to doing this one, clean my desk off like that. And flip it over. Did you spot what I forgot to do? Did you spot it? I didn't do my edges. I didn't do these. I'm so glad that didn't stick. That's one. So it'll just make me collar more tacky. Yeah, I didn't tuck them in. I'll do the other one. Yeah. So let's pretend we're already done it once. Oh, look how much better that sticks because I let air get to it first. Right. And oh, it's kept clean on that side. Let's rub those bits off. Make sure this is all stuck down. Now, I've done these one i've gone around and done them one at a time you can do opposites first if you want it doesn't really matter i'm going to grab my glue rubber for those bits because they've started to dry on a little bit more i've tidied my drawer out now so my glue rubber should be at the front here it is i've lost my big piece of glue rubber it'll be on the floor somewhere this piece look how easily that comes off love this stuff when you make mistakes and make messes like i do god sends <laughs> these little tools right so that's the first half wrapped and done we've got you see the nice neat corners we've got yeah so that's going to be the front of my album i decided to go for black i'll bring some alice paper back in again because I just think it will be so nice with this paper. Let's have a look. Yeah. So I'm thinking I might use the actual cover page. Well, the first page on the front. I'm not sure. Look, that just goes so nice against black, doesn't it? Can you even see it? Yeah. So I put all this on now. And where are we going to see a bit round edge like that? <laughs> but, yeah. The bits that I'm going to see now, I know are perfect and up to my standards yeah so that's one done right, i'm gonna pause i'm gonna have a cup of tea finish my cup of tea i'm gonna wrap the other one i don't know what that were craft a lunch and then i'm gonna come back and cover the spine and join the pages together so two ticks and i'm back i've i've already covered it haven't I? so i've just glued the edges down so I've now got my two my front and my back covers covered in the black cat cardstock and you can see why I like to do all the measuring now it's just, it just looks so lovely and neat doesn't it yeah right I'm gonna do the spine now I don't think I'm gonna bother with glue for the spine I might just come in and use tape and then I've got to sew my signatures in aren't I? no oh yeah I'm going to use glue and a thinner tape. I've got some much thinner tape. When I say thinner, I mean thinner. Look how thin these little things are. I just like those edges. Definitely glued down. So, I'm going to use this. This is very small, very fine tape. Where's my little ruler gone? I'll measure it for you in case you want to know. Is it an eighth? Yeah, it's an eighth of an inch, this. Yeah, I think it might be easier to... I don't know. I can't remember if I've had trouble sewing through this. I don't... Do you know, I don't have trouble sewing through anything because I punch it first with a bradawl. 
So I don't really think it makes any difference. So do you know, I don't even know why I'm farting about with this little tape. I think I'm just going to... I'm going to use big tape. Go back to plan A, woman. Yeah, I'm just going to put the big tape all the way up. I'm not even going to use glue. I'd have done this on covers if it weren't for the fact that this tape works out very expensive when you use it everywhere. I do like to save a penny or two. If I had three row, rows of this would have probably been perfect. I'd have not started off with an eighth of an inch of tape there. But this tape, it's one of them. When I run out of this, I won't buy any more. I used to go through so much of it doing mini albums. But now I do junk journals. I don't use it quite so often. <laughs> brought another roll in now. Look, we've got another width that'll fit there with a the one eighth. And that's why I had the different widths. Everything got done with tape. I don't know why there's such a mad emphasis on tape for junk journaling, for mini album making. And I know you lucky ladies in the US have the score tape brand, but that it's very expensive. And I used to buy this in bulk, a roll of each size all at once, and I made a huge saving on it, and they'd last for like six months to a year. These have been ongoing now for, yeah, two or three years because I don't use it so much. Right, get me bone folder. I've mentioned in a previous video, this I get this from a company who make tape for other companies who uh, manufacture UPVC windows. I use this tape for sticking the two, sticking the windows together, yeah. I think it's going to be okay on a bit of card, don't you? Right, I'm going to take my backings off with my blunt knife. I'm not going to be so bothered about all my perfect measuring for this spine piece. Because it's a lot smaller, isn't it? You're not going to see any of this. The whole spine, inside and out, is going to end up covered in something else apart from a smidgen at the top and bottom whereas on the covers you're going to see the whole edges aren't you we'll come back throwing it around so i'm going to use one of the bits i cut off the a4 sheet and i'm just eyeballing that and sticking it down You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to be really, really brave, and I'm just going to cut that across there. Oh, how brave were I? And then I'm coming in and doing my corners. Again, this is one of those things when you've done loads, you just you just know how much to do. So do that little trick with your pencil mark across the edge. If you're new to it. Right. I've got my big bone folder. Do you know, I find this much easier with big one, yeah. My new Teflon bone folder, I think it's too pointy. We're very scared I'm going to puncture the paper. Look how much easier it is with this. I need another one of these. No idea where I got it from. I've had it years. Done that on all sides. And this time I'm going to do it with tape. Am I? Yeah, I'm going to do it with tape. I'm going to do it with that thinner one I just got out. So again, it's just all going to get covered, isn't it? I'm going to put the tape on the inside, on that side, yeah. It's been a while since I've done one of these mini album style. And I don't know why I'm cutting everything with a big chomp of scissors. Probably because I didn't get my others out. That's going to go there. I'll do this bottom one next because then it'll, it'll end up being a silly little piece if I 
leave it while it last. That ruler wobbling is annoying me, I don't know about you. Put it away. And then this one. Yeah. I think it takes a bit longer than wick glue, doesn't it? Swings around about. As long as you use a dry adhesive, I, I say on this grey board, whichever one you use is up to you. Your glue of preference. People can do the wet adhesive, I can't. Not without it warping, so I don't. Right. Yes, and then we need some more there. If I'd have put this on before mitering the corners, I could have just cut this at the same time as the corner. Oh, I put that a bit wonky, didn't I? Totally twisted that tape round on itself and made a bit of a mess. This is what I then do because I'm really frugal. <laughs> I put the mitered corner to the I'm just gonna cut off any bits there that overhung. Don't matter if I've got a bit of paper up as well. You're not gonna see it. Two more edges to go. We've got two more edges to go. I promise I'm not going to sing anymore. Just embarrass the children. They came home from school yesterday and said that the teacher had been playing 80s music in class. I'm like, oh, what were they playing? I don't know. And they've got a friend who really likes some 80s music. Uh, she obviously likes it. She's heard it from her parents. She likes a bit of Bruce Springsteen. Uh, but... None of them knew what this 80s music was. All they described it to me as it was very whiny. <laughs> I can't even begin to think what 80s music it was that could be described as whiny. I really don't know. I might have to put some 80s playlists on YouTube to try and narrow it down and figure out what whiny music it was. It was a technology teacher that put it on, apparently. I forgot to ask what lesson they were actually doing. <laughs> uh, I know sometimes in music they've done, like, quizzes. They did an 80s pop quiz during lockdown. And Rachel did fantastic in that, because I was sat outside of her giving her all answers. But, yeah. You just think, teachers must know that. We'll never go on. Who wants to be a millionaire together? Cheating. Oh, that just wouldn't do, would it? Right, I'm going to do my long sides first. And then I'm going to do my little mitre bits. want to put my short sides in. Right. That's one edge. It is a lot quicker at sticking than with your tape. Than with your glue, sorry. But hey -ho. I hope you've enjoyed watching me do this. I'm not the quickest when it comes to doing these kind of things. Don't forget to take her thingy off that one as well, woman. Did I forget to take it off that other? I honestly don't know. I really don't know, you know. I'm gonna have to watch video back. It's got tape on there, it's not gonna fall apart, is it? world's not gonna end yeah i did take it off because i can see four pieces of the backing that's that one i oh, did i do you know i don't know i'm gonna stop whittling about it because it hasn't fell apart has it right i'm coming in doing those little corners again this bell folder's bone fold is much better for it oh yes it's perfect i might have to stop using it for silly things and just save it for making me book covers so I now need to come in and take the backing off there and there it's all static it's stuck to me them corners look good so I'll do that 
happy with those. Mitre these in the same. It's not called mitering in them, tucking them in. If you don't have a bone folder for this, you could try using the end of a pen, a plastic pen, or a really blunt knife. You know, like the not a butter knife. I've got some really chunky knives, me. They won't cut. Yeah, they cut. They just will don't cut. Right, then I'll take the back, you know. Oops. Stick your finger in that tape. Stick your fingers in it, woman. It won't stick as well, will it? Let's pull that over. Yeah, I wasn't going to cover this at all. Then I thought, hang on. The reason you need to cover it is you do see the top and the bottom edge. And also by covering it, it's then the same thickness as your covers. So that's that. We now have a spine, and we have two covers. That's obviously going to be the inside. So, we're cooking with gas on low, I would say. The gas is definitely on low. Right, I'm now going to bring in the Tyvek tape. Yeah, it's Tyvek in the form of tape. <laughs> it, it's not cheap over here, Tyvek, in the UK. So I find the tape easier and not really any more expensive. So, I'm going to cut a piece of Tyvek tape nearly as long as the height of my journal well i'm going to cut four all together actually that's one <clears throat> this is going to be two Right. So now I have this little doodad. Well, I have a couple of doodads. I've just dropped my Tyvek tape on the floor. Where's it gone? Granny grab a time. Oh my god, where Granny grab her is. Here we go. Granny grab her. One. Two. Yeah, I'd knocked it down the side of my desk, under my desk. So yeah, I'll show you my little doodads. These are for when I make covers and mini albums. These are basically just to measure my gap that I want between the spine and the cover. Yeah. Now, depending on what I'm covering it with, I'll do it with two, three or four thicknesses of chipboard. So I know this is grey board and it's not as thick as chipboard, but I'm then going to come and put some fabric on. So I'm going to use this piece that is three thicknesses of chipboard. I think, mm, yeah, I'm going to measure how much that is for you and then tell you. Because if you're measuring it, you may not have this chipboard that I've, I'm bringing in. Uh, so let's see how thick that is. Let's just measure it. That's basically three sixteenths of an inch, yeah? So it's three sixteenths of an inch gap. So that when we glue our spine and pages together and it bends up, we've got some room, haven't we? So I've cut my Tyvek tape. And I'm gonna hang on, hang on. I've cut it too long. It needs to be short. It needs to be less than eight inches short long whatever right because Ooh. yeah I don't want it to go full length because I've put the Tyvek on after paper right I've took the sticky off one side and I'm gonna pop that on Took the sticky, took the backing off, off there. I'm then going to peel the rest of that backing off. I'm going to bring in my chipboard, 
three wide, which we said were three sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to place that up to there, you see, and then I'm going to pop that on there. Yeah, and I'm going to get my head right in it to make sure I've got the height correct. So if you can see my back of my grey unwashed hair. <laughs> I do apologise. It's Mother's Day and do what I want. And I didn't want to wash my hair this morning. I just wanted a quick shower. No hair involved. So that's that. Well, what a wally I've just been. My memory was full on my phone. So I went ahead and finished that off without you. But all you missed is finishing sticking, yeah, the black card on the spine and putting the tie back on. So what I've done before switching camera back on after deleting a load of rubbish is I've gone and cut, you know the black chipboard I showed you at the beginning I've cut some of that to size, yeah? And I'm going to fasten this together with Tyvek to show you exactly what I did What a wally So what we did is <laughs> I cut two pieces of Tyvek, not quite as tall as the spine so let's cut theirs. Yeah, this is Tyvek tape. Yeah, yeah, you weren't here when I explained it, were you? It's, yeah, Tyvek is quite expensive in the UK. So I use this. I saw Zoe Tofield use it first. And I thought, what a fabulous idea, Mrs. Then I'm cutting two pieces that are a good two inch longer than the spine. It just saves you having to mess about with any kind of glue and cutting Tyvek. Because we can buy it in A4 sheets here in the UK, but like I say, it's not cheap. Uh, this roll cost me about £20, but it's so long. I've, it's the only roll I've ever bought. I can't remember how big it were, but I've used a fair bit. So, yes, let's pretend this is my <laughs> cardstock covered uh, grey board, which we all know it isn't. It's some chip board, black chipboard I've just cut to size. It's the exact same size. I'll have to make another album now, won't I? So, what I'm going to do, I've took this, the back in is like a thin strip and a thick strip. So what I tend to do, it works out handy. I take the thin strip off and then I put my spine on and I, I just put it right up to where the thicker piece of backing starts. So if you didn't have tape with backing like this, I would say just over a third of the way into your piece of Tyvek look. Well, in fact, I've did it a bit wonky, but it's, it's going to be all right. It'll be right. Then I'm going to do the same with other shorter piece. Don't lose your long pieces. Yeah, you missed an appearance at Granny Grabber. When I cut my Tyvek for the one that I wasn't filming, it fell on the floor down the side at desk and I had to get Granny Grabber out to pick it up. So yeah. Right, do the same on this side of the spine. Try and get a bit straighter this time, missus. There we go. I'm going to come in with the bone folder along the adhesive. Then I'm going to take one of the backing pieces off one side. I then have... This is the same thickness as this chipboard, yeah? It looks a bit thicker, actually. It's supposed to be the same. Uh, I've got three pieces of it stuck together and I use that to measure my gap and I like this amount of gap between my spine and my page, my cover. I can't speak. <laughs> so yeah, I can't believe I've done that. That's when your brain's not firing fully into it on all cylinders, you do silly things. Like forget to clear your phone memory ready to film. Just get my heading way while I position that. So yeah, that's not staying there. Now I've got my cover on, I'm just going to take that off. And can you see, it just gives me that lovely even gap. We need a good gap so that our book will work smoothly when we've got it covered with fabric and more cardstock and whatever else we're going to stick over this spine. So I'm going to take that back in off. have to use Tyvek for this. I could use anything but the reason I use Tyvek is it's very strong, very durable. 
you can cut it but you can't rip it so it will hold your spine together well right let's put my greasy grey head in play while I line this up there we go yeah, it's Mother's Day, I can do what I want on Mother's Day. I had a shower and didn't bother washing my hair. Even though I know it needed washing, I thought it's not like anyone's going to whisk me off to a fancy restaurant, is it? Because we're in lockdown. Right, I'm now going to get my longer bits of Tyvek. I'm going to take the narrow piece off again, I think. What are you, an ice cream van? That's the first time I've heard an ice cream van this year. And then I'm going to put that, you know, because it's curved and static it. Right, I'm just going to line it up roughly with Tyvek on that side. Just so when I fold it over, it's going to be roughly the same place. Yeah. I might as well do them both at one centre. Definitely easier than where I did it last time. Can't believe my phone memory got full. Hey ho, right, do the same again with that. Let's flip it over, take off the other backing pieces. Now, if you use paper or something that would just rip on that edge but with Tyvek it doesn't right there we go don't worry that's white and that's black because same with this one we've got two now twins yeah you can see it's not true black that can't you that black chipboard it's not true black so I'll probably whatever I make with that I will come in and put another bit of fabric on yeah this is true black, the black cat will love it. So yeah, we're going to cover that with the outside. I'm going to put fabric on. The inside is going to have design paper on, so you won't see the white tie wreck at all. But that is how I go about making my covers. That's how I make my mini, mini album covers too. I think that's why I do them like this for journals. It's a tried and tested method and it works well for me. And you can do it with junk, yeah. Look, all the backing from my paper pads. You don't have to buy that. You don't have to cover it in any black cardstock. It depends what junk journal you're making. Had I been using a cards uh, design paper that didn't work out quite so expensive per sheet, because there are only 10 sheets in those Stamperia pads, I may have covered the whole thing in it. But I want this black edge anyway. I think it will look good with the Stamperia papers so I'll bring that back in for one more look at the gorgeousness I have noticed on the website that I put the link for which I'll put again in this it's my creative spirit they do the 12 inch pad the 8 inch pad and the pack of die cuts all together for 19.99 in the UK but there's another paper pad that I'd not seen before. It's the Stamperia Alice Gold. It's on offer at £15 and there are 22 A4 sheets. 22 12 by 12 sheets. I don't need it. Really don't need it. Mm, it is my birthday next week. I might buy that for my birthday from kids. And let this one be just for Mother's Day. Could I? I don't know. Might do. We'll see how I go on. I think I've got enough paper actually, don't you? Anyway, shouldn't waffle and miss this. That's how I do my covers. And yeah, next weekend I will be doing my signatures. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. If you are wanting to craft along, you've got another week now to get your papers all ready. And yes, I will see you next Saturday with Alice. And I'll see you through the week with my other videos. So thank you very much for joining me. And enjoy the rest of your mother's day thank you very much bye